All right, so let's make this pre-workshop arcade thing. Um, this video is a response to all of the people asking me to work with them to create projects. Uh, sorry, I just literally don't have the time to do these kind of things. So I'd rather just show you how to make it. So we're gonna be creating this in Unreal Engine. Um, this will not be a complete beginner's tutorial as we're not gonna go through every single step and recreate the whole scene that we've made here. But I'm gonna show you essentially how exactly I made this and how if you want to replicate the scene, you would be able to. Not too worried about people stealing my ideas or all of that kind of thing because no one will be able to have the creative vision that I bring to this. However, if you want to replicate the scene or use it for your own thing, I'm more than, you know, welcome. That's why I'm making this video. So it is actually a fairly simple process to get this end result. So you're gonna laugh at this first step, but essentially what I do is go to Google SketchUp 3D Warehouse. And this is where I get my car models from. Now, is this the best thing to do? Probably not. Should you do it? I don't know. Obviously you'd get much better results by going and getting actual like 3D scans, real car models. You know, the ones that I use have around, you know, 500,000 polygons. That's quite a lot actually. I think the rest of these, this only has like 100,000 polygons or something uh, of detail within the model. But if you wanted super, super realistic and you have like an absolutely amazing rendering rig, then you'd best to go to, I'm not sure where you'd go, like Sketchfab or somewhere and get a one of these models that has like a million polygons or more and it'll give you that kind of ultra realistic look. However, for the purpose of this, this is just like a simple Google SketchUp model and it looks good so I use that for now. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna download a new model and we're gonna go through the process of how I get the car into Unreal Engine and how we apply materials, put it into the scene and you know get it rendered. So I'm gonna choose this Porsche 911 as I would uh, like to get one of these at some point. But um, this one has a lot of polygons. This will look really good. If you're downloading from the Google SketchUp warehouse, you wanna make sure it has at least over 75,000 polygons, anything less, starts to uh, look a bit shit. I used a Mazda RX-7 model that had really low polygons and it just looks terrible um, once you render it. So make sure it has a lot of polygons. We're gonna be using this model. Go ahead and download it. So once it's downloaded, I like to use Rhino to import these and then refine them before putting them into Unreal Engine. Also, you can um, use Datasmith to essentially uh, extract it from Rhino nice and cleanly. Here's the existing RX-7 model that I used. So you'll see the amount of detail that's actually within these. The body itself is actually not too detailed, but it's good enough. And then I stitched it together with some wheels from a different model. Same with the wing mirrors are from a different model. So you can kind of use Rhino to stitch these all together before exporting it. So we're just gonna go ahead and move this over and import our newly downloaded Porsche. So we'll go import file, just press okay. Ah, oh, that's perfect. Some of these are not scaled or at the correct orientation, but when you import your model, you wanna make sure that you have the X and, y, uh, X and Z, X, Y, whatever, these two axes. Make sure that your model is planted perfectly like that because it will make scaling it up and down a lot easier. So, you know, sometimes you'll import these models and it'll appear like 200 meters off in the distance at the wrong scale, so you just wanna Make sure you scale it properly. Uh, you can do that, you know, by, by selecting it all and then using these gumballs to scale it up and down. Um, you can use a square, let's say like, you get the dimensions of the car and you enter it in 3000 by, or whatever it would be, 4000. And then you can scale your car according to whatever this is. But this looks perfectly scaled and already orientated on our axis. I can't stress enough how much, how important it is to keep it as close to the origin point as possible. Otherwise, this will give you a lot of issues when importing it into Unreal Engine. So honestly, this model looks pretty good. I really don't think there's anything we need to do to actually fix or change anything. Um, as I said with the RX-7 or other models that we used, you know, sometimes you'll need to change the wheels. So you download another model, then move them, um, put them together. But in this case, we'll just select everything we want to export, highlight it, and then we'll just type export. Now we want to export it as a Unreal Datasmith. Uh, if you don't have this plugin already, uh, you can download it and install it. And we'll just call this Porsche. We'll go save textures and then go save. 
So now this is exporting it as a Unreal Datasmith file and it'll be ready to put straight into Unreal Engine. So we'll go ahead and close this. All right, so now we're in Unreal Engine. Here's our scene. Uh, I've already built this scene and whatnot, but I'll show you how exactly I built it and how you can build something similar or something to your own taste. So you can see there's a lot of different lighting um, textures that goes into just one simple scene. So the ground is a plane, just a default Unreal Engine plane, same with the roof. But then these surrounds, uh, I modeled, well, I got from a model in Rhino. Uh, I can't exactly remember where. I think it was like a Star Wars hangar that we used. So essentially this was the same process as the SketchUp thing, except I think we bought this model from uh, Sketchfab or something during university. So the surrounding model that you want to use is best to build it in Rhino. Then the same way, export it as a Datasmith file and then import it into Unreal Engine. So you can kind of see this is what it looks like. Yeah, and then for textures, I used the Quixel Megascan library as this works well for things like concrete and whatnot. So Quixel Megascan library, you go here, scan, you go surfaces, and I just need the concrete. Uh, I think I used asphalt and concrete. But essentially you just type in concrete and then choose whichever material you want. And then you download that and import that into your scene. And once it's downloaded, it will end up in the material browser. And then we just opened it and we dragged it and drop it onto our surrounding uh, context or whatever you want to call that. And for the end of this, this didn't end up in the final product that we made, but I have a little JPEG of a city in the background. So originally the angle was going to be like this or something. And then so essentially be like that. And then just see like a little city in the background. And on the texture itself, I mapped the illumination to the lights on the image. So I think you just change it to an emissive. You can add a multiplier and plug that in just like that from RGB, multiply to emissive color and change your material to a oh, just default surface. And I think at some point you change this to emissive material and then that means that all like the little lights and stuff on this image will illuminate. So if you wanted to create a kind of city in the background, you can do that. It's a good way to do it. You need to adjust it in Photoshop as well a bit, uh, according to the lighting of your scene. So it's best to set up the lighting first before doing that. So now we're going to import our Porsche model. So we'll change this to unlit. The origin point is over here somewhere. So we end up importing there. So we go Datasmith, File, Import, Porsche, we'll go Open. I usually like to make a new folder just for Datasmith files. Where is it? There you go. So I just put it into Datasmith, Import, go OK. Geometry materials. I have tried messing around with the static mesh light map resolution and increasing it, but the amount of uh, like detail in our model, I don't think it really matters that much because they're all just SketchUp models anyway. So we'll just import it as it is. Yeah, I'm hoping you have a base level knowledge of Unreal Engine. Some of this stuff is a little bit advanced, but again, this is not a beginner's tutorial. If you do want a complete like I guess I can do a whole beginner's tutorial on the uh, pipeline from SketchUp or any any other program like Rhino into Unreal Engine and how that whole workflow works and that I can do like a step-by-step -step process. But this I'm assuming you have like a base knowledge understanding of how to work these programs. So here's our Porsche. Ends up in the Outliner toolbox. So we'll just go to our main actor which is this, and we're able to move our Porsche around. So we're going to move this uh, to replace where this car is. I like to put it in the position first, and then we'll apply our materials and whatnot in a second. There you go, it looks pretty good. Also, we've got a material decal here uh, with some decals on it. I might just leave that here, but all this essentially is, I went plus here, and then... Our decal actor, there we go. And then I just put this texture on it. Again, a little bit of a complicated process applying that texture to it. You essentially just import it as a decal with a transparency on it, turn it into a virtual texture, turn it to a material, then apply it to a decal actor. That's a pretty simple process. So we'll just move our old model out the way. This is a bit of an autistic setup. Uh, it's probably a better way to do this, but each car, <laughs> I 
put it where it needed to be and then I've just put a 500 grid snap on it and then I move it up for each scene. I'm sure there's a smarter way to set up, you know, a different car for each scene so it's, it's more seamless but I've just piled them all together here and I just select which car I need and then move it down by 500. I'm not the smartest person. These are the default Google SketchUp materials. Doesn't look that great. Actually, this still looks pretty decent for the SketchUp materials, but we're gonna go ahead and apply automotive material. I got this from, these materials are pretty amazing. So you go to Unreal Engine Marketplace. And what I used was the, these are the best materials, I think, even as just generic materials for non-automotive applications. There's, this pack comes with so much. It's got like metal, painted metal, uh, plastic, leather, suede, all these materials, lights, everything. So this pack is honestly the best. Yes, it's by Epic Games. So it's, this is the best. Uh, if you want just like a pack of materials to use for anything really. So you just download that. So now we've got our materials downloaded. Our Porsche is here. We're going to go ahead and apply materials. So go to automotive materials, go materials, exterior, we'll go uh, car paint. I don't know what color to do this, honestly. Actually, if I had one of these, I know exactly what color it would be. So I'm going to make it that color. So you can, the good thing about these materials is you can edit them. You can kind of see in real time the color that you're making. So we're going to go for like a champagne aluminium or champagne gold kind of color. Almost similar to, uh, I forgot what it's called, that skyline color, millennium jade or something. I can't remember, but yeah, this kind of color. You can change it to any color you want. Now, I found out that don't mess with these settings. Just leave them as they are. You know, you can decrease or increase the roughness, the shininess, the flakes. If anything, if you're going to adjust anything, only move the orange peel size down and test that. But every other setting, I like to just leave it for now as the paint material in Unreal Engine is quite complex. It's best just to leave it as it is. So we're going to go ahead and select every panel on the car that we want to apply the paint to. And then we can go ahead on the right hand side here, where it says material, we'll go ahead and drag and drop our color in. Now it's not quite the color I was wanting, but we can always adjust that. You see the mesh kind of starts to break down a little bit, maybe just the way the polygons work. It doesn't look great, but I guess from a distance, it looks all right. Just go ahead and adjust the color of this. Because it will always look different under different lighting conditions. But that lighting does look real shit on this model for some reason. Sometimes it's a hit or miss. Looks right on the back. Let's see if we made it black. Still doesn't really fix it. But it's alright, we'll just set it to like, around there. So there's our paint material applied. I think because the model looks a bit strange on the front, we might turn it around. I don't know, we'll see uh, when we render it out and get the final result. So we'll go ahead and apply some glass now. The default glass material. But again, you can open up the settings and adjust them. Depending on what your lighting condition is. So since we're here, I'll just discuss the lighting. So I've used a series of rectangle lights that have expanded out. So you can see there this distance. I've increased the attenuation radius to be the same as the length of the light. Because if this is shorter, then it, even though the light's long, um, you're only going to see what's within the attenuation radius. So I've increased that as well, as well as the source width. And I've turned the intensity down a lot. You want a lot of low intensity lights uh, because the camera can be kind of weird sometimes. I've got one there, 
one up there, one in the middle, and essentially just two on the sides. And that's sufficient lighting for this kind of scene. So go ahead and finish off applying the materials. Um, it's essentially just applying the corresponding materials that you have. So for example, we'll just go metal. They have a radial metal somewhere, there we go. And you can apply that to your brakes. And then for the wheels, I'll do a chrome. Um, then we'll do these lights. So we'll change our snap on to like 50. It will move the lenses up. And this way we can do the lights. So I'm not sure if the housing is black or chrome. We'll just go ahead and have a quick look. Uh, looks like the housing is black. So we'll just use like a shiny black material. I think I've got a... I used the chrome, so I duplicated it. And you can change the parameters to apply a tint to it. See, we got a tint and we decrease the brightness. So we'll just go ahead. I think black looks much better. And these top parts, I'll just make it chrome as well. Then we can go ahead and move our lenses back down or we'll apply one of our tints. I usually just go tint clear. Or you can use like a foggy one, whichever one you think looks, looks better. And I will go, there's a specific carbon fiber material which will apply this. This is a mesh grill here. So the mesh material already looks pretty good. Oh, that's an actual modeled mesh. Even better. And we'll apply our carbon fiber. Then depending on how detailed you want to go, we can go ahead and apply materials to the interior. I'll just apply it to the basic things that you'll see within the camera. So you can go to interior, and go plastic. I'm not sure what material they would actually use for this, but you can go like plastic leather. It looks pretty decent, so we'll apply that. Um, yeah, essentially you can just sit and apply materials for hours onto these interiors, but since we're not really going to see the interior that much, I think that looks alright as it is. We'll just change the material of this trim so we can move our glass up. And we'll go back to an exterior plastic, maybe just plastic glossy, and apply that. Same with the rear window. Same to these trim areas. So our model's looking pretty good and we can probably set up our camera now. So let's go ahead and quickly save this. So all of our materials are now applied. I think this part's carbon fiber, I don't know. We're gonna go ahead and I've already set up a camera. We'll set up a new camera. So you just go up to here, create camera here and go sign camera actor. In this case, I'm just gonna copy and paste the existing one. Then we go to our cinematic viewports and view our newly placed camera, which is this one. This is in a 1920 by 1920 format, but we'll just change this back to 16 by 9. Your default camera should be in 16 by 9 digital film. So we'll keep it as that for like a widescreen view. And we're going to change some settings of this camera. So the focal length, so lens length, maybe we'll change this to 15. Or maybe 25. We want to choose a kind of new angle. Because of our detail of our model, I think we'll go with a rear view. Actually, let's see what happens if we apply a light to this, um, a light material to this. Uh, You can see our light material. So you can choose whatever angle you think looks good. Just go from this kind of lower angle, set it up about there. Then we'll go ahead and add a level sequence. You 
go ahead track actor the sequencer and then add your camera onto it so camera actor three i like to make a keyframe for your camera's movements just so if you accidentally move it uh, it stays where it is so put a keyframe there uh, you can adjust some of the lighting and the exposure down here in lens settings I've got the bloom all the way down because if you have bloom in these high intensity light scenes it can start to break down the engine depending on what you're using to render but we'll just keep the bloom off for now then we'll go render got our camera here um, I use this configuration I'll show you the settings I have so our output will be 2560 by 1440 I like to export it at higher than 1080, even if your image is going to be at 1080p. It's better to export it at a higher resolution than downscale it afterwards. Custom uh, start and end frame, click that, and then go just 1 and 2. Anti-aliasing, I put it up really high to 15. Uh, tick this, change it to none. I showed this in the, pre in the previous tutorial, maybe I'll do a complete uh, beginner's guide to setting up your camera but you know if you know what you're doing just look at these settings and replicate them and then we'll go ahead and render this see what it looks like so now that we're in photoshop um, the ui assets i've used a series of like rectangles and then added and added a stroke and gradient to it so you can make your own styles um, then it's imported PNGs for the logos, create some custom text. It's all pretty straightforward in Photoshop. And then for the main image, to get that kind of video game style look, I've gone and added what's called the Need for Speed Most Wanted Piss Filter, which essentially makes everything look kind of yellowy. I already like this filter as it's kind of just a nostalgic look. But you go to Camera Raw Filter on our image, and then I've adjusted the temperature to be a little bit more yellow, the tint a little bit more green. Uh, and especially I've added some grain to it and you just adjust some of these parameters like texture, clarity. You, so you want, essentially the main things you want is that grain mixed with that kind of yellowy look. Uh, you can always change it depending on what kind of style you want, but I think that looks best for this use case. Uh, so there we go. That's how you make that kind of arcade style looks. Now you're welcome to make something similar yourself if you'd, if you'd like to do this. Um, if you want me to explain any more of these steps in more detail in the next video or you want like a proper beginner's guide, uh, let me know in the comments and we can make that happen. But yeah, thanks for watching.